Japanese ingenuity prepared to face the large-scale disaster looming on the horizon. A massive earthquake, the big one, which happens about once every hundred years. There is more than a 70% chance that within the next 30 years, we'll be hit with a huge earthquake. How have engineers managed to build the most modern city in the world on land that is constantly shifting? What new dangers does Tokyo face? How is the city preparing for the worst? Will Tokyo be able to withstand the wrath of the Earth once more? Journey to the land of the rising sun. Chronicle of a megalopolis facing disaster. Japan's capital is unlike any other city in the world. Located on the main island of the Japanese archipelago, the urban area of Tokyo spans an expanse of 50 kilometers. Literally, Tokyo means eastern capital. It's the most populated city in the world. The Japanese capital is the hypercenter of a megalopolis that stretches 1,200 kilometers. Over 105 million people, in other words, 80% of the Japanese population, live on this strip of land sandwiched between the mountains and the sea. The city of Tokyo is a miracle issued from the determination of its inhabitants, who after each disaster have always picked themselves up and kept forging ahead. Because living in Tokyo means learning to live with the danger of natural disasters. For us Japanese, it's part of our culture. In a way, we're used to calamity. Every year, over a million earthquakes rock the Earth, a hundred thousand of which can actually be felt by people. In Japan, about a dozen large earthquakes happen each year. One legend has it, the large island rests on a giant fish that thrashes about every once in a while. Japan's high seismic activity is due to the fact it lies at the junction of four major tectonic plates, the Pacific, North American, Eurasian, and Philippine. We know we have a sort of Damocles over our heads, or rather under our feet. Everyone knows it could happen, but we live with it. The Pacific plate off the coast of Tokyo shifts westward eight centimeters a year. This phenomenon, called subduction, is responsible for the Earth's most violent quakes. The plates come into collision and generate rising tension. One day, the friction unleashes a force that triggers a huge vibration. Scenes such as this are commonplace for the inhabitants of Tokyo. And things aren't about to change, because in the region of Tokyo, the number of earthquakes just keeps rising, and they can be very intense. Intensity lets us accurately measure how, in every region, each place was shaken. In Japan, seismic intensity is measured on the Shindo scale. It describes the degree of shaking at a given point on the Earth's surface. The higher the level, the greater the damage. At four on the Shindo scale, people are frightened. Most people asleep wake up. At five, people find it difficult to move. Many unreinforced walls collapse. At six, certain buildings lose their roof tiles and their windows break. At seven, walls collapse. The island nation suffers 20% of the most violent earthquakes on the planet. The city of Tokyo is built on a plain, a particularly vulnerable zone that rests on water-saturated soil with very low density. As you see on this map, the red shows where earthquakes are biggest. Blue zones correspond to areas that don't feel too many quakes. It's ironic, but the places where it's easiest to build and live are the same areas that are most susceptible to earthquakes. 
Nevertheless, this is where the Japanese decided to build their capital. The terrain is vast and flat. It also has sea access. But in fact, the Japanese couldn't have found a worse place to build their city. And yet. Formerly called Edo, Tokyo was originally a small fishing village that grew and gained in importance over the centuries. Most of its people lived in traditional, inexpensive wooden houses. With each earthquake, the small structures and their heavy thatched roofs would collapse. Tokyoites would tirelessly rebuild as they awaited the next quake. Still, Tokyo's builders would always put their ingenuity to the test. It was out of the question that important buildings like palaces or temples should collapse every time the earth shook. Japan's Buddhist temples are among the oldest wooden structures in the world. They are distinctive in that they've been built in a way that offers amazing resistance to the frequent earthquakes that rock the country. Starting back in the seventh century with pagodas, builders sought to erect increasingly taller structures and increasingly more solid ones. To do so, they perfected an ingenious technique. The big wooden temples and shrines don't have foundations. Buildings are often set on enormous columns, then set on large stones that are barely sunk into the ground. Globally speaking, that's what defines construction in Japan for the past 1,500 years. The central pillar of the pagoda is only attached to the top level. It's independent on the lower levels. Thanks to the central pillar, any distortion resulting from an earthquake is spread evenly over the five levels, ensuring the shock isn't concentrated in one spot where it could cause a rupture. We've made flexible buildings that don't fight the movement. It's the story of the oak tree and the reed. The tree, no, the reed, yes. The building moves, like me, to absorb the shock. This type of building has never collapsed. We can affirm that the system is very efficient. Solid structures that can flex and sway. Once again, this was the principle used to build Edo Castle in the 15th century. To protect the palace, constructors built over six kilometers of moats and walls. Made of granite blocks weighing several tons and fit together like a puzzle, the wall does a remarkable job of resisting tremors. Once the shaking stops, the blocks settle back into their original spots. These jewels of Tokyo architecture have proven they can resist earthquakes. On the other hand, the traditional organization of the city with its small streets and wooden houses turned out to be unadapted. And Tokyo would pay a high price. <laughs> 